of mining rich data types. Uh, the first speaker is Wei Fang from Baidu, and uh, the title of his talk is Face It, Fast Comprehensive Mining of Co-Evolving High Order Time Series. Okay, go ahead. Thanks very much. This uh, joint work with uh, Cai Yongjie and uh, Tung Hao Hao from ASU and uh, Ji Ping from CUNY and Ching He from uh, University of Buffalo and I'm Wei Fan from Baidu Big Data Lab in Sunnyvale, California. So the title is uh, Fastest, Fast uh, Comprehensive Mining of uh, Co-Evolving Time Series. So these are some uh, examples on uh, you know, uh, time series uh, data. Uh, there are four examples in here, and the first one is uh, in a smart building, and where you have uh, sensors that can monitor the, uh, the temperature, the uh, humidity, you know, uh, different uh, type of uh, metrics. And the second one, like in a smart city, and you have uh, uh, vehicles that are connected. You have the location of the vehicle and their speed. And uh, the third one here is uh, what we care, particularly like those days in China and the stock market, the, uh, the uh, different uh, stocks, the uh, mean price, the max price, the volume of the day. And the for example here is on, on the uh, oceanography, you have uh, the, uh, the location and the temperature and the, uh, the, uh, the pressure on that particular point. And all these uh, examples uh, are uh, uh, cases of time series mining. So there are uh, several very important challenges in uh, time series mining. Uh, here I uh, give uh, you know, their names and I will give some examples to demonstrate the meaning. So the first one is high order, and uh, which means you have uh, multiple uh, time series in the same time. And the second one is uh, there are contextual constraints among the different uh, time series data. And the third one is uh, there are temporal smoothness uh, guarantees among the different uh, points in the time series data. So here is uh, show you uh, what we mean by high order and uh, we have uh, in the sensor data for example the data coming from multiple sources like uh, the sensor may monitor in the smart building the, the temperature, the uh, light level, the humidity and so on. And in the smart uh, vehicle and we have uh, the uh, location of the vehicle and the speed of the vehicle at the location. Like in the stock market, we have the max price, the mean price, and the volume. And so every, all this information, the high order information can be represented in a, in a, in a tensor naturally. So you can see that the, uh, the example on the top right corner and uh, shows the sensor and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the voltage, the uh, light, the humidity and the temperature, and evolves as time goes by. And there are uh, a lot of uh, constraints in the uh, uh, time series data. And uh, for example, if we look at one slice on the tensor, we uh, look at the, the temperature slice on the tensor and as the, uh, in the different, of the different sensors in the room and they are uh, in the chart in the example on the left and we have uh, six sensors in different color and uh, the chart on the right shows you during the day and uh, how the, uh, the temperature changes uh, the time goes by. And the, uh, the sensor network uh, also uh, on the edges shows the uh, how connected uh, the relationship among the different sensors to demonstrate how the levels of their correlation. And here is, uh, we look at the, uh, the tensor uh, from a different angle. Here we look at in a particular sensor and uh, it measures uh, temperature, humidity, light, and the voltage on the same sensor. And uh, as time goes by, and the chart on the right shows you the, uh, the values, you know, goes up and down. And the, uh, the network on the left shows their relationships, their correlations. And the different color, the node in color shows you uh, the different measurements. And also the third challenge is the uh, time series, the, uh, uh, 
the value of the adjacent uh, reading points are have some smoothness guarantee, and the uh, expected error, the errors of the two adjacent value are expected to be small. And uh, there are some uh, uh, previous approaches that, that can uh, analyze uh, the term series data. So here is uh, using a singular value decomposition. And here I, we only have uh, uh, one single uh, measurements, uh, different time series data of uh, the traffic volume. Uh, you can see on the chart on the left shows you uh, the time goes by uh, how the value evolves in the, money, the morning rush hour and the afternoon rush hour. And the same, the value can be represented in the matrix. And uh, the TS1, TS2, the uh, capital letters shows you the different time series. And the, uh, the, the lower case shows you the readings at different time of the day. And you can uh, analyze uh, the time series using a singular value decomposition for the occurring detection. And uh, uh, after the uh, SVD, you can uh, decompose the matrix into the following uh, latent vectors. But the limitation of SVD for time series analysis is uh, it cannot easily handle high order. Uh, for example, here I only show so time series of one reading, like the, uh, the speed of the vehicle. And there's no location there. And there's no additional information. And in the same time, it doesn't take into account the contextual information, the constraints among the different readings, different entities in the network. In the same time, there's no uh, uh, smoothness, uh, no smoothness constraints in the formulation. Uh, there are some uh, previous work on uh, analyzing uh, time series data, including like uh, tensor decomposition, like the Tucker decomposition, and uh, low rank matrix factorization and some other uh, time series mining approaches that we are familiar of. And the limitation is uh, each one is, is not comprehensive in uh, tackling all the three challenges that I just discussed, the high order, the uh, contextual constraints, and the temporal smoothness. So the paper uh, we uh, propose, the methods facets, actually handles all three challenges in the same single formulation. And I will discuss the details in the future slide, in the next few slides. So the, uh, to uh, handle the high order the, uh, over time series data, we uh, actually uh, you know, leverage over uh, Tucker decomposition. So, uh, so we decompose uh, the tensor into uh, several uh, coefficient matrix, also uh, time series latent factor. And this one uh, shows the, uh, the, the, the correlations and the relationships. And then to uh, uh, introduce the constraints among the different uh, sensors, the different readings, we impose a uh, contextual com uh, constraints using an, uh, another matrix. So we use a contextual network and which can be decomposed into a coefficient matrix as well as a contextual latent factor. So putting them all together, uh, both the high order using the Tucker decomposition and the contextual constraints, we can formulate it into the following way. So this one is the uh, Tucker uh, decomposition, then uh, we uh, impose the uh, contextual constraints on top of it and the contextual constraints based limit if uh, two uh, readings, two sensors, or two uh, time series data are related, they are decomposed. Latent factor should also be very similar. Then uh, the third constraint is uh, how to handle the temporal smoothness among the different readings at different uh, timestamp. So to handle this one, we use a, 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 a multilinear Gaussian and uh, to uh, limit to a constraint and the, uh, how the reading from the next step is dependent on the previous step. And uh, so this one is a formulation and uh, the B here is the uh, uh, transition uh, tensor from the uh, previous step into the, into the next step. 
So then uh, we put everything together uh, using a graphical model, so which handles uh, all three uh, constraints. The high order one, we uh, use the uh, Tucker decomposition. Then uh, we uh, uh, add additional contextual constraints into the formulation to uh, make sure that if uh, two uh, readings are correlated, they should have a similar uh, latent factor. Then we add additional temporal smoothness into the formulation. And uh, with this one, uh, finding because all the different parameters are related, uh, it's very hard to find a global uh, optimization. So we actually use the EM approach to solve this problem. And the details you can find uh, in the paper is uh, it's really hard to, to uh, go through all the details in, in the talk. And here shows you a special case when uh, there's only a mode is uh, only one, so there's only one, uh, one reading like the uh, traffic data I showed earlier. And uh, using uh, this uh, proposed approach, we can include the uh, contextual network into the decomposition and uh, then uh, you can uh, solve the problem using the EM approach. And then the, uh, the uh, matrix will be decomposed into the following uh, uh, latent vectors. So these are some experiments we have uh, experimented. So uh, the first important thing is uh, how sensitive are the parameters and uh, we used in uh, the proposed algorithm and uh, also how accurate is the uh, algorithm compared with uh, the other traditional approaches that we are familiar with, and also how uh, the proposed approach will scale up with the number of uh, like time series and uh, how is the uh, computational cost compared with other methods. And the paper have uh, used uh, like four data sets and here I only uh, show uh, some of the selected results and one using the oceanography and one use a smart traffic problem. And there are two parameters in the algorithm and one is the dimension of the latent uh, factor and uh, the other is the impact, the uh, constraint. And uh, here as you see that the uh, impact of the latent uh, dimensions or latent factor uh, actually, when uh, the size is uh, about a certain level, uh, the result on both the training and testing already stabilizes. And uh, the chart on the right shows you and the impact of the uh, constraints. As the lambda goes uh, bigger, so uh, the uh, value in the middle around uh, between 0 0.1 and 0 0.8, the uh, results are pretty much stable. And uh, here are uh, <coughs> results on the uh, missing value recovery. So you have a, a whole uh, tensor high order, like in the uh, smart, in the oceanography, you only uh, have uh, readings of uh, uh, only like less than 1%. Uh, you know, the uh, missing value goes from 10% uh, up to nearly completely missing, 99.95 missing. And uh, then the SPMD on the smart traffic, you can see that the uh, proposed methods and uh, the uh, error rate actually is the lowest compared with the other uh, approaches. And here is uh, another uh, uh, study. So this one is on the uh, trip of the smart city and uh, shows you uh, we use, we're using from 90% from training data and down to only 1% of training data. Actually, there are two lines in here, and uh, one is the blue and one is the red. So the blue one is the, uh, the training, and the red one is uh, on, the, uh, on the testing, so those we do not have. You can see that uh, we can still recover the uh, trip instance pretty well uh, we, uh, if we only have only 1% of the data. But that shows you that uh, the uh, proposed facet algorithm is pretty much effective in recovering missing values. And uh, here is uh, another uh, result 
shows you that uh, if we are uh, taking a small number of uh, data in, in, in the uh, as missing data and comparing with uh, existing approaches and the proposed approach also have a lower uh, lower error rate. And here is uh, shows you how the proposed approach can scale up with the number of time series. And the uh, T here on the X axis is the uh, number of time series going from uh, 2000 up to over uh, 10,800. And the Y axis is the running time of uh, the uh, uh, using a different uh, latent uh, dimension, latent factor and uh, can show you that the uh, running time is uh, a linear, basically linear with the number of uh, time series. And uh, this one shows you the efficiency of the uh, proposed approach and uh, as compared with uh, some other existing uh, methods. And uh, in, uh, so facets is uh, the, as is facets and uh, the other one, DCMF, are the, the quickest comparing with other methods. And actually it's a uh, pretty, uh, it's like only 10% compared with the slowest approach. So here is a uh, conclusion. So we proposed a uh, network of high order time series data. And the main contribution is uh, we incorporate uh, three constraints, the uh, high order time series, the uh, contextual constraints, as well as the temporal smoothness. And to solve uh, the uh, problem formulation, we use an EM algorithm to find the solution. And uh, it's uh, linearly scale, uh, sc scalable in the number of uh, the uh, time series data. And in our empirical evaluation, it uh, outperformed all the other existing competitors. And uh, people who are interested in trying it out can uh, contact the others for the uh, MATLAB code. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Yeah, any questions? Okay, um, okay. I, I actually have uh, one question. Yes. Uh, you said you use EM algorithm, right? Right. So that means you actually make likelihood function and then you uh, differentiate to find the maximum, right? Uh, is it like straightforward or to do with your formulation or uh, is there any difficulty for doing uh, that? I think it's pretty straightforward mm -hmm. to implement. Okay. And okay. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, if you want the detail, we can send you the code. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> I, I just ask, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, any other question? Hi. Uh, um, yeah. How long is your, like the experimental data? How big? How big? Yeah. Uh, they are in the paper. Do you mind with the paper? Yeah. yeah. I don't have it on top of my mind, sorry. Okay. okay. Any other question? Okay. Thank you. Thank you.